Hi, welcome to Mr. G's Lab. Today we're going to talk about lab safety. And in area one, we have a an exit sign and the actual exit. The in area two we have an exit sign and another exit. And in area eleven we have an exit sign and an actual exit. If the fire bell goes off, right here, you will be turning off your, your uh, gas valves, right here, there we are, there's a gas valve right here, this would be for natural gas, and this uh, valve would be for air. And you would turn the uh, natural gas valve off and proceed out the nearest exit for Heavy, right here. He and Dr. Brinkloff and Romez would probably leave through this exit. Other people down at this end would leave through the other two exits. So, in here we have a, a, uh, a personal item shelf um, for when, during labs. All personal items shall be either placed here or they can also be placed at your desk or underneath your desk. Um, coats, uh, umbrellas, bags, momochan, fuzzy toasters, they all get placed on the personal item shelf. In area two, we have the exit sign as before, the fire uh, bell, and the exit. We also have a fire extinguisher if you've been shown how to use a fire extinguisher and there's a fire, uh, and it's small, i.e. just small, um, uh, and uh, your teacher is authorized to use it, go ahead and use the fire extinguisher. We're in area three, is showing how to use a distilled water squeeze bottle. That would be here. Only distilled water goes through here, and it's only for rinsing and adding a small amount of water into your beaker or cleaning uh, certain certain uh, labware um, before you continue on with your experiment. A carrying tray carries bottles and beakers and test tubes and other items that you would need for to bring over to your lab station. Uh, next to Maria. Uh, who, if you notice, is wearing these lovely eye safety goggles. Everyone who's working with chemicals is required to wear eye safety goggles to prevent uh, chemicals from splashing in their eyes or from burning materials from a Bunsen burner or from a test tube being heated in a Bunsen burner from being splashed in their eyes. Each uh, chemical bottle or container will contain a label. That label will have the name of the chemical and a four color uh, label that is red, blue, yellow, or white. The red area would indicate flammability, uh, whether, it, whether it, how quickly it burns, at what, what temperature. Um, health would be referring to whether it's deadly. Uh, if you breathe and need full protective suit, which we will never have in this classroom, um, or if it's relatively safe for you to use, no precautions are necessary. Um, it's more about stuff that you would breathe in. Reactivity would be something that may detonate if exposed to uh, air or water, um, such as uh, certain types of chemicals, if exposed to um, water, will explode. They will, or they will burn underwater. You also have... Um, uh, a white area that would be indicating whether something is an acid or an alkali or uh, corrosive, whether water needs to be used, and that label will be on each one of these bottles or even on the tiny bottles. Um, the chemical stirrer is a glass rod that um, Jorge is using. Again, Jorge is wearing a pair of eye safety goggles. Jorge is not using any chemicals right now. Um, so it's a lot allowed for him to be wearing gloves. The same is true for Maria, but w if they were using chemicals, they would have to take the gloves off. These are safety goggles. Um, as you can see, Itaki over here has glasses, 
but he is also wearing safety goggles, and that's to prevent his glasses from um, becoming damaged, and it also, uh, glasses will not protect uh, your eyes or face. He, uh, Itaki is using a uh, test tube um, to heat it on a Bunsen burner. The bottom of the test tube is about halfway uh, up the flame, and your teacher will show you a more uh, closer demonstration. Uh, the only thing you need to know is that the test tube is not to touch the Bunsen burner, and being too high above the top of the flame is also too high. If you notice, Itaki is also using a test tube holder, and he's using it, let's see if we can show you a little bit better, yeah, there we are, he is holding it near the top of the test tube. Um, he's also pointing it away from himself and anyone else, um, so let's get out of his way so it doesn't, doesn't, uh, um, uh, go off, and uh, here we have Skull is also wearing gogg safety goggles, and Skull's wearing safety goggles because Ataki is using the Bunsen burner and heating up uh, something in the test tube, a uh, chemical. Um, Rom I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jorge is uh, uh, not using chemicals, um, so uh, the Skull doesn't really have to be too worried about uh, not wearing safety goggles when he's near Jorge because Jorge is not using chemicals but Itaki is, so that's why he's wearing the, uh, the safety goggles. Test tubes can be lying flat down, or laying down, if there's, if there's nothing in them. Um, if there is something in them, they need to be in test tube racks or test tube holders. This is an empty test tube rack that uh, Romez is uh, holding. And Itaki is also um, heating an open test tube. You would never heat a closed test tube or a test tube that has any any form anything that's closed. You would never heat anything that's flammable because what would happen is is that the the chemical will become will, will burn and then you have a very large mess and we don't like messes. Um, uh, Romez is also showing how to hold a, a Erlenmeyer flask, and an Erlenmeyer flask is very similar to a beaker. The beakers are over here. And this is an Erlenmeyer flask, and it's kind of long, but it's Erlenmeyer flasks. And um, the Erlenmeyer flasks allow uh, a mixing of chemicals without using a stir rod, a chemical stir that... Uh, Jorge has, but it allows uh, allows the mixing of chemicals by swirling, and your teacher will show you the proper way to swirl uh, chemicals in in uh, in an Erlenmeyer flask. Also, um, Dr. Brinkelhoff, uh, he is our guest lecturer today. He is uh, showing us um, our both how to hold a graduated cylinder and how to hold a beaker. <laughs> Um, with the graduated cylinder, you want to have, um, th this is what you would use to measure a more precise and more accurate measurement, and your, and your teacher will show you how to um, correctly measure um, uh, liquid in a, in a graduated cylinder by looking at what's called the meniscus, um, and your teacher will show you what a meniscus is. And, again, these are graduated cylinders, and it's for more accurate or precise measurements. And then beakers are for general mixing of uh, liquids uh, and other chemicals together. And that concludes our section for um, lab safety.